Hi guys, so over the past few months I used quite a lot of lenses with the Fujifilm X-T4 so in this video I want to give you a little overview and a few recommendations of lenses that I think work really well for video shooting and at the end of the video I will also give you some tips on how to improve the autofocus when you shoot video and we will not do an in-depth review of every lens here, I will just go quickly through it and tell you what I like about every lens and what I use it for. Okay, I would say let's start directly with the lens that I use the most and that has to be the Fujifilm 16 to 55 mm f2.8 lens, mostly because of that zoom range. It goes from about 24 mm full frame equivalent to 82 mm full frame equivalent and that's just an awesome zoom range. You can do so much with it, like at 60 mm I can perfectly vlog and on 82 or 55 mm I can perfectly get some nice close up shots and general b-roll and it also gives me a nice shallow depth of field especially when, I, when I'm zoomed in because of that f2.8. So overall a great lens because of that zoom range. And the autofocus on this lens is also amazing because it has the linear motors. So these are the newer motors from Fuji and they are very quiet and they also are a lot faster than the older motors and therefore give you a lot better performance in video. And if you look for lenses from Fujifilm with these motors, you should look that it has the letters LM in the name because that stands for linear motors and then you know, okay, this is one of the lenses with the better autofocus. So overall a lens that I can warmly recommend especially also for autos because it has weather, weather resistance so if you're out in the rain you wouldn't really have to worry with this lens. And the next native Fuji lens that I use actually quite a bit as well is the 55 to 200 millimeter lens, this bad boy here. And this lens does not have weather resistance, so be a bit careful when you're out in the rain, better keep it in your bag. But this lens also has linear motors, so that's great. The autofocus works perfectly. And what I really like about this lens is actually the size for the zoom range that you get. It equals in zo a zoom range of about 82 millimeters to 300 millimeters on a full frame camera. And if you would get a lens like that on a full frame camera it would be a lot bigger and heavier and therefore you would likely not bring it on hikes etc but this lens because of the size and weight it's actually no problem to bring it on hikes or even longer trips maybe over a week or so so this lens is actually always in my bag and this is I think really important because if I have a lens that I never bring then I don't need to own it so overall great lens and I can also absolutely recommend that especially if you go a lot on hikes etc and you want to get close-up shots or shots of subjects that are farther away. And these are actually the only two native Fuji lenses that I use because many Fuji lenses have all the autofocus motors and therefore they don't perform that good for video anymore. But fortunately Fuji opened their mount so that third party lens manufacturers can produce lenses for this system. And one of those manufacturers is Viltrox, the lens that I'm shooting on right now, the 23mm f1.4. And this is a lens that I'm very satisfied with because at first it's pretty cheap at about 330 dollars and it has an f1.4 so it gives a nice shallow depth of field as you can see it's great for low light and 23 millimeters on an APS-C is about 35 millimeters which is a field of view that I really enjoy and aside from that the only thing that I don't like so much about this lens is actually the bouquet like it it looks a bit busy in the background sometimes especially if you have trees or bushes behind you if you're outdoor but it's not really a big issue and still it's nice to have a nice amount of bouquet for that price on this camera. And the 23mm f1.4 was not the only Viltrox lens that I had on the Fujifilm X-T4. I also had the 85mm f1.8 and my experiences with this lens were about the same. Like the autofocus was also great. Bouquet could be a little bit softer, more creamy, but still great overall. And I really enjoyed the look of this lens. The reason why I sold this lens was that it was quite heavy and therefore I never brought it with me. And then it doesn't make sense to have it. So right now I'm waiting for the 56 millimeter f1.4 lens from Viltrox and I expect about the same results as with the other lenses. It's just a lot smaller and more lightweight so I will have it more with me. And the next lens is I think a lens that you should already know the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8 lens. If you're into filmmaking on crop sensor cameras for a while then you should know this lens because the optical qualities are just amazing. It's super sharp. The booker looks awesome. It really gives you this nice full frame look and it has a zoom range of about 
27 millimeters around to 50 millimeters. So a zoom range that is really usable. The main reason why I have this lens and the 16 to 55 millimeter lens is that this lens is a bit heavy and because you need an adapter for it, it it's like becomes pretty long. So the, it makes the camera pretty front heavy. So it's not really a lens that I would use for run and gun. Therefore the 16 to 55 millimeter is definitely better, but still like, especially if I'm in a studio setting or if I would shoot for clients, then that's definitely the lens to go. The adapter that I use is the Fringer EFX Pro 2 and I can only say that this adapter works really good with this lens. The autofocus works perfectly fine. It's a little bit slower I would say than the 16 to 55 millimeter. I did not directly compare. It's just my subjective opinion from using both lenses but yeah the autofocus generally also works perfectly fine. It does not hunt or anything like that and that's most important for me. So overall if you are looking for a full frame look on this camera and you want to have a zoom lens for that and not a prime lens then this is definitely a lens to go for. So this were our lenses in the standard to long zoom range so far, but there's also one super wide angle lens that I use mostly for vlogging, but also landscape shots, time lapses, etc. And that's the Canon EFS 10 to 18 millimeter lens. And now you might ask yourself the question, why this lens and not the Fujifilm 10 to 10 to 24 millimeters? And there's actually a good reason. Like I had both lenses before, and when I compared these lenses, the results were pretty much the same. Like I could expect a bit of focus hunting sometimes like it was unpredictable sometimes it would per it work perfectly then in under other conditions it suddenly started to hunt again then with both lenses i also had a bit of wobble in the corners when i vlogged etc so Overall, this lens is both performed average, not totally bad, was still usable, but also not on the level where I really enjoyed using it. And this, the EFS 10 to 18 millimeter lens is a lot cheaper than the 10 to 24 millimeter lens from Fuji. And as I had the Fringer adapter already, there was absolutely no reason for me to keep the Fuji lens, so I sold that one. But even if you don't have the Fringer adapter, if you buy the Canon EFS lens together with the Fringer adapter, it's still about $200 cheaper than than the native Fuji lens. So I can absolutely recommend if you're looking for a super wide angle lens to get this one instead of the Fujifilm 10 to 24. The only real reason to get the 10 to 24 would be that you have a little bit more zoom range. But in that case, I would also have a look at the Canon 10 to 20 millimeters, a little bit less zoom range, but a little bit more than here. But overall, if you mostly want to really use it at 10 millimeters for vlogging and for landscape shots, then the Canon is definitely the way to go. So, so much about lenses now. I would say let's also come to the tips. And the first tip that I want to give you here is for interview style shots like I'm doing right now where a face is for quite a long time at the same spot in the camera. When you have shots like that, even if you have face tracking on, definitely set the focus point on the face or where the face will be later because when let's say I would turn my face to the side now, then the camera would lose my face and it would instantly start hunting or at least it would focus on the background. And you can avoid that by simply setting the focus point where the face is, because then it does not hunt, it actually sticks on the face, the focus does not change, and then it looks good. So this is what I do here in my studio all the time. I had it once where I forgot to do that, and I could see instantly that it was hunting all the time. It was really bad every time when I turned around or I looked somewhere else, then it lost track and it started hunting. So that really helps a lot. Of course, if you watch directly into the camera all the time, you never really turn around or something like that, and it's not really an issue. But well, you never know, sometimes you look somewhere else. So that's the first tip. And my second tip is when you want to use face tracking to generally use lenses that are a bit faster, that have a lower aperture, because then you get more background blur and that makes it less likely that the camera thinks there's a face in the background and then focuses on that. What mostly happens when you're outside and it detects faces in trees or so on where there are actually no faces. It totally makes sense because if you have more background blur, then there is less detail in the background and therefore it's it's less likely that the camera detects a face there. So my observation was that, for example, with the Canon 10 to 80 millimeters, there's actually happened quite a lot that it detected a face somewhere else and it was hunting. But on a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter, for example, that never happened, it never hunted there. So for me, it seems like that really makes a bit of a difference. Then you also might ask what settings I use for autofocus and I can only agree with Philip Bloom in that topic and that's that the settings totally 
vary from lens to lens and also the shooting conditions. What I generally have, I have the sensitivity set to zero, so the fastest, and then I adjust the speed how I need it and depending on shooting conditions and the lens. So it's usually somewhere between zero and negative five where I have my speed. So negative five oftentimes makes that it won't really change the focus or it changes it way too late but therefore it's a lot slower. So oftentimes like minus three, minus four in that area works best. But most of the time, to be honest, I just have it set to manual focus and I use the AF on button because that gives me full control over my focus. And I really only use the fo autofocus on in conditions like that here when I'm in front of the camera and I it, it's complicated to press the AF on button, but also when I want to track a subject, when maybe a person walks towards the camera and stuff like that. So aside from that, I don't use autofocus anyway, so it's not a big issue for me. So what are your favorite lenses for video on the Fujifilm X-T4? Leave it in the comments below. And also if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button. And I would say see you next week.